Hi, I'm Toby from AbletonDrama.com and I quickly want to show you how you can set up Ableton Live 11 to follow your drums, live drums tempo. Okay, so you would need first a dynamic microphone and I'm using the SM57 here and it's put in the Wurst position, which means it's um, same distance from your snare, your toms, if you play some more toms, and just over the kick drum facing your snare drum. So this way, this will get like the kick, the snare and the toms and this are those are the main parts the follower tempo uh, function in Ableton Live is listening to. So obviously this mic needs to be connected to an external sound card. So just plug it in, gain it right so you get a good strong signal but obviously that it's not too hot. Okay, then in Ableton Live you need to make sure that this sound card is connected and is selected in your audio preferences and then you can go to link tempo MIDI here and you need to switch on the show tempo follower toggle and now it's showing up here and you can switch it on later and you need to select the channel here your mic is going into and you can see when I play my kick I'm getting a nice strong signal over here cool okay um, this is actually all you need to make this working obviously there are a few things you need to know to make this working for especially for a live performance so if you're interested just keep watching or make sure uh, to download my um, tempo concept and tempo follower uh, guide which is um, available there's a link in the video description down below or on the site depends on where you're watching this just go there and uh, you can download the guide on how to set this all up and how to make this use in a live performance and different tempo concepts for Ableton Live as well so let's check out the new tempo follower feature of Ableton Live. Ableton Live is able to follow your or your drummers, depending on who's doing the tech in your band, uh, your drummers tempo here. So um, as I just explained, you just need one microphone and you don't, it's not a very expensive microphone, the SM57 for example. So uh, that would be a good choice put it into the voice position to get the kick, snare and toms and then you can switch on follow in Ableton Live and as soon as you switch it on it will listen to your drums already so so if you want to make sure follow isn't listening you need to automate um, switching follow off or using um, an e-pad or an, another MIDI controller to switch it on and off and that makes sense in most cases but sometimes you just want to press play and you know okay in bar 2 I want follow to start without hitting anything so you can do this with my device uh, my Max for Life device and you will need Max for Life for that which is included in the Ableton Suite version or can be bought as an add-on to standard Ableton Live standard and here you can just do the automations inside so you don't need to take care on your gig on switching follow on or off. Okay, so one really important thing about tempo follow is that it's meant to follow tempo fluctuations around a reference tempo. So it is always putting like analyzing the beat towards a reference tempo. So this reference tempo needs to be set like every song you're playing in your live set. This tempo needs to be given by Ableton Live. So with scenes or um, scene names, for example, or with the set song tempo automation in arrangement view. Okay, so let's play a little and um, you might already see how good it's working. And even if I'm not playing a straight two and four beat or uh, a straight straighter beat, you will you will check this in a second. Okay, so let's play a little.
Okay, so you could see here, I was speeding up uh, in purpose. I hope you could hear this. Like, And I wasn't playing like a proper 2-4 backbeat on the snare drum in the second part because the part is like taking one eight note before the one changing the chords. So this is actually like not a straight rock thing. So this is already quite advanced when it comes to like popular music and the concept of like making f tempo follow to understand and making like an algorithm to understand what I'm actually doing, but it's working quite well as you could hear. So I talked to a few drummers and they were all really excited about this tempo follower feature coming out now or being out now with Ableton 11. So one thing for all of them was a bit like creating some insecurity and which is do I want to have a mic on stage which is actually saying to Ableton Live like I'm giving you the tempo. You might have a situation where you don't have that much time to set up your gig for example. It all needs to go quick so this one needs to be set up like 100% right if it's like dominating or giving your, your tempo listening to your tempo and setting the tempo I mean so obviously this needs to be like 100% so we are working with computers here so we are performing with computers there is no 100% obviously but there are things you could keep in mind and maybe once you're learning playing with it it will feel more secure and after a few shows you will feel fine on how to set this up but still I thought hey, hang on, there might be another solution how to use the tempo follow-up feature without like having a mic standing there. Uh, I mean, it's just like the position could change or um, you could have like a really big noise, like maybe the bass is standing behind you or the speaker of the bass is standing behind you and you're getting some crosstalks. I mean, um, the Ableton peeps and showed me, well, it's got a really nice threshold and it's listening, it's analyzing rhythmical patterns. So a bass shouldn't be a problem. But still, even when I told this to other drummers, they were kind of like, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, like, I'm feeling insecure about it, like to have this on stage. So... I came up with the idea to just use um, an SPDS X or to use another drum um, drum pad, drum module actually, which is creating sound. So you could have triggers set up to your kick and to your snare, even to your toms if you want to connect those to a drum module, which is then creating the samples, triggering the samples and have those samples being sent into your sound card or and that's why I picked the SPDSX here as an example. You can actually use the SPDSX as an audio in for Ableton Live. So this way you could send samples, drum samples to follow to make sure like it's getting every hit and it's not getting any crosstalk. It will have the same um, volume levels like every gig, etc. And there's not so much which, which can go wrong. You don't have to listen to those samples. You can just set those samples as ghost samples. So this is all pretty well explained in my um, tempo follower guide, which you can download. Just follow the links in the video description. So yes, so that was an idea I came up with just to make things maybe a little bit more easier. And I mean, if you're playing an SPDSX anyways, you just need to get to triggers here, chuck them on the kick and the snare, send some ghost notes over and you are done. One thing to keep in mind here actually, um, obviously the audio conversion into the analog to digital audio conversion takes some time and obviously the faster um, this is happening, the, the faster your your input latency it's called, is obviously the, the better uh, Ableton Live can do all the calculating, tempo, etc. So the shorter the better. So if you're using something like this in between and then plug it into a sound card, there is some latency added here. It should be fine in most cases, but just to let you know, yeah, that might be safer on this side, but it might uh, 
add some latency which depending on the music and the style will interfere and will not feel that great like using directly an audio source like a mic and feed the drums directly in there so but just to to keep that in mind cool